Hey, look, doesn't matter. I got a job interview in like 20 seconds. First impressions are key. You gotta be formal, but not too formal so you don't freak anybody out. You gotta be friendly, but not too friendly so they don't take advantage of you. And most importantly, you gotta sell them on the product that is you right off the bat. So basically just copy Final Fantasy VII's opening cutscene. I mean, that's what I do. Final Fantasy VII's opening is like my role model. And... Sh I'm late! This is your interview. Oh, thank God. I swear there for a second. Anyways, Seth Donsmore, boss. Hi, Drew Peterson, unemployed and late. Yeah, you're not off to a good start. Damn, I was afraid you'd say that. Whatever. Let's just get started. Why do you think you'd be a good fit here? Uh, I am a person. Well, that may be true. I need a little bit more than that. You know what? Here, actually, let me hand you my resume. This is just the opening cutscene of Final Fantasy VII. I know, right? That's my role model. Yeah, you're still not doing well. It's fine. You know what? Here, I'm in a video about myself talking about opening cutscenes that I hope you understand. This is my TV. How did you- Doesn't matter, Blight! When video games first became a thing, they were... not very complex. If it was an arcade game, they were just there to give you some bright colors and loud sounds for a couple seconds, and if it was a home console game, they were just a couple colored squares. There you go, have fun. It was more about quick, bite-sized gameplay spurts above anything else. But as video games started to evolve, there became a lot more things you could do with them. You could start to build worlds, you could have more interesting control options other than just hold right and jump, and you could tell stories. You could start to break up the gameplay with little movies explaining what the hell is going on. These are called cutscenes, and the more games advanced, the more story-driven a game could be, and the more cutscenes that could be added. Of course, you don't really need cutscenes in a game if you just want to have a game about man versus turtle, then that's cool too. But if you want to tell a huge and complex story, then cutscenes help you out with that. So what if I prefer man versus turtle? Then you lose my respect. Hey, what are you writing? You don't want to know. Now when you have a big story to tell, it's important to have setup. You can't just go into a game head first with no context, or Sonic Generations could just start in Green Hill Zone without a new warning, that's fine too. But in most cases, it's not only important to tell people what the hell is currently happening in the game, but also what the hell is going to happen in the game. Unless it's about Man vs. Turtle. This is where the opening cutscene comes into play. The job of an opening cutscene, much like the first scene of a movie, the first sentence of a book, or the first can of beans cracked open in a pancake recipe... That isn't how you make pancakes. What?! ...is designed to set the mood of the thing you're about to experience. They're designed to grab your attention and really stick with you. As a result, many opening cutscenes have become iconic and are usually the first thing that's thought of when the game is brought up. The best opening cutscenes are held as some of the best moments in video games and are usually accompanied by some of the best games to ever grace humanity. So let's just go through some opening cutscenes and break down what makes them so good. And why not, I'll break out my old Openizer 700 and score each on a scale of 1 to 7. Why 7? The other numbers were busy. You know, despite the NES being super limited due to being ass old, Mega Man 2 still has one of the most famous openings in video games. A reprise of the Mega Man 1 credits plays over this city skyline, and then the music starts to pick up as the camera climbs up this building and everything figuratively and literally rises and rises until... Yeah, that feels good. It may not be super flashy, and it may just be a bunch of narration text, but the music is really what sells the whole thing. Somehow they were able to make this feel so... epic, for lack of a better word. I don't really see what's so great about this. What the fuck? Super Mario 64 is another game with a super simple opening. You start off with a letter from Peach begging Mario to come over because she's got a cake in the fridge and doesn't know what to do with it. Then you get to take a little trip around the outside of Peach's castle, and Mario pops out of a pipe! That's it! After this, you're free to explore the game how you want. Now, Super Mario 64 is a phenomenal game, and the intro cutscene is really just there to drop you into it. On its own, it's nothing special, but it's short and sweet and doesn't overstay its welcome. Just like, oh, I wish this interview was 
What? No, nothing. You know what I just realized? The first two Pac-Man World games have pretty much the exact same opening cutscene tone-wise. You start off with some light-hearted, wacky hijinks, and then in like the last 10 seconds, the mood takes the biggest 180, the likes of which the state of Massachusetts has never seen before. It's suddenly serious and sinister, and it's really weird and kind of jarring. Not necessarily bad, just weird. However, it is Pac-Man, so it gets bonus points. Wow, okay, you're obviously biased. What gives you that idea? You literally just gave it extra points just because it's Pac-Man. And? Fine, it's not even that good. Wait, I thought we were talking about video games. Why is Star Wars here? Oh, what? Yeah, this is basically perfect. The music, the fluid animation, the squash and stretch on Sonic's model, the cinematic composure, Super Sonic! This just nails what Sonic is all about, and holy shit, look at this! This is the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my entire life! Look at this! Oh, if I had six minutes left to live, this is what I'm watching. This is... Oh, it's so good. This is stupid. I don't care about any of this. Then why don't I show you the best opening to the best sports game of all time? This is gonna be very, very interesting. I'm not kidding. This is another opening that is just plain fun. You just get to see how absolutely wild this game is while Run DMC blares out of the speakers. I mean, it's not like it's anything special, but it's fun and I like it. Now this isn't technically an intro cutscene since it's not really part of the game's story, but I just wanted a chance to talk about it because it's so good! It just feels good to watch, it's fun! It's animated so well and I love watching it. Honestly, it makes me want a Sonic game with this art style. I don't have a lot to say about this, I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that it makes me happy. How is that fair? You can't just rank something that isn't even technically an opening cutscene. Hey, it's my ranking, I can do what I want with it. All right, here we go, the perfect opening cutscene. Final Fantasy VII's opening cutscene is one of the most iconic things in all of video games. You've got the opening shot with Aerith, and then that zoom out over Midgar as the music builds up and... Oh yeah. And then the camera comes back down to the train station and the music becomes all intense as you see Avalanche hop off the train and then Cloud does the most unnecessary flip ever and BAM you're plopped right into the action. Fantastic stuff. But the remake? Well first off you got this new opening shot that shows Midgar still under construction with the music reflecting the sinisterness of the city and the people that run it. And then you get to the part with Aerith again and the camera starts pulling out and the music is swelling and it keeps going and things are getting louder and more intense and- OH JUST DO THE THING ALREADY! Oh! Wait, this is stupid. All you're doing is talking about good openings. Well, why should that matter? Because it's decreasing your employability. <sighs> Fine! I will say, this little movie that plays before you do anything is pretty good really shows off how over the top they wanted this game to be and how it was really supposed to be the next leap forward for Sonic. And then you actually start the game and... Oh yeah! This is happening! Oh! I mean, it's a product of its time, but even still, the choppy animation, the awful voice acting, pretty much everything about this is less than pleasant to watch. Although to be fair, it is pretty indicative of what you get with the rest of the game. Okay, that's better, but I need to see more. Uh... New Super Mario Bros. opening isn't really all that bad, it's just sort of unnecessary. Like, you got some lightning over Peach's castle, Mario goes to check it out, Peach gets kidnapped. Like, there really wasn't a need for this. It's a Mario game, we all know Peach is gonna get kidnapped, we don't need to see it happen. All this shows is the game is just gonna be Man vs. Turtle. Yes! The thing about bad opening cutscenes is that there really aren't a lot that stick out in my mind. Like, the good ones are really good and stick with you, and the bad ones are just kind of forgettable. 
But then there are some games whose opening cutscenes also kind of have gameplay in them. I'm talking about like how in Celeste, the game doesn't really start until the city, so the entire prologue could be considered the opening cutscene, even though you are controlling Madeline. Or like how in Portal, where you can move around in the first room, but you can't really do anything until the first portal opens. Or like how The Last of Us doesn't really start until after... Yeah, that. Even The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Link wakes up after a hundred years and then you're given control. But the game doesn't really start until... Okay, I've had just about enough of this. This is supposed to be a job interview, and all you've done is talk about your stupid video game. No, 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 this, this is a, about good first impressions. See, I'm teaching you about good first impressions. But this is your job interview. Right, and I made a good first impression. Please, please, you don't understand. I need this job at whatever it is you do here. You don't even know what we do here. Uh, I want to say dentist. Get out. What? Get out! I can't believe you applied for a job here without even knowing what we do. Like, dentist? Why is that the first thing that came to your little mind? Like, just get out! Get out and never come back! I still don't know what he does!